Welcome to Spirit Speak, exploring the afterlife with Connie and Barry Strom. Your hosts are here to speak the words of the spirits and answer your questions. Now, here are Connie and Barry. Hey, hello, everybody, and welcome to Spirit Speak, exploring the afterlife. I'm Barry Strom, your host, and hopefully I'll be using my gift of spirit communication to spread your knowledge of the afterlife. To all that are willing to open your minds and listen, Connie. I'm Connie Strom, your ho- co-host. Uh, this week, we'll be speaking with a friend of ours, Winifred Adams. She's the host of Making Life Brighter on the Voice America Variety Network. In the second segment, we will also live channel with Archangel Haniel, the angel of joy, to get her opinion on finding happiness as well. Okay, we're in the third segment. We're hoping to take some phone calls. Number is 866-472-5788. In the second segment, we are going to live channel with Archangel Haniel, as Connie said. We're going to have her hang around for the third segment. So if you call in, you get a chance to ask her a question. You can ask Winifred, Connie, or myself. So there's a deal for you. All of our shows are available on our YouTube channel. It's in the name of Barry Strom, where we have almost 400 videos these days. All of our archives are available on the Voice America Variety Network. Okay. We've been looking forward to having Winifred on our show. So let's take as much time with her as we can and welcome her to Spirit Speak, Exploring the Afterlife. Hello, Winifred. Hello, Barry and Connie. Thank you for having me on with you today. Oh, wouldn't miss it. Wouldn't miss it. (laughs) You're a true light worker. So why don't you take a couple of minutes and tell us a little bit about what you do? (laughs) What, What I do? Well... (laughs) <laughs> I like to think about it as a, a bit of a conduit, like a switch um, from the spirit world to the physical world, but it's really all the spirit world technically. So um, as a medical intuitive and a quantum healer, I have spent my entire adult life working with people's health and wellness and being able to accurately see the patterning that goes underneath their issues or Uh, how they formulate into um, issues within their systems. And using medical intuition and the quantum field, we're able to also correct the quantum field of their vessel, of their being, of their body. And sometimes that's more atomic field work, and sometimes that's actual biological work. But when you shift the emotional field, you make an immediate impact on the physical vessel the physical field. So I spent a lot of time with people working through the things that got them to that place of illness to begin with and how they come back out of that to commune more with their own spirit. Uh, That is wonderful. Uh, Winifred, there are currently a lot of very evil people in this world who seem very happy. How would you define true happiness? Well, the absence of evil would be one. (laughs) The absence of entertaining low-frequency energy would be the the primary thing today, especially on that list. There seems to be an inordinate amount of uh, confusion going on and disassociation going on. And so you can't be one or the other. You either are in concert with your spirit or you're not in concert with your spirit. There's no in between. <laughs> how, how do you know when you're in concert with your spirit? There is an experiential knowing of a heart and soul and open heartedness that people feel. And you can't deny that. That's a built in God given right. And I've seen this again and again in the quantum healing meditations that we do and other things. When people dial down and they become quiet within, it's kind of like people in a church aren't running around screaming, right? They're usually sitting in a pew praying and it's silent and it's reverent. There's a, there's a particular reorganization of the energy field that's happening in that prayer and that field. And so when you're disturbed or loud in your mind or inside, there's no room for God. There's no room for spirit or Christ. And when you come into this place of stillness, of experiential um the the feeling of love that you were born with that you came in knowing when you step back into that knowingness then you're in that 
that place. And it is a beautiful, overwhelming, calming feeling that you can't shake and nobody can shake out of you that says, I'm okay this moment. Everything's all right in this moment. Do you think it's possible to find happiness if you don't have spiritual beliefs? Uh, I Spiritual beliefs is the wording that would have a lot of people <laughs> upended at this time, I think, because I even have people that tell me that using the word God is Satan. And I'm like, really? Maybe you don't know what God is yet. Because Christ, the Lord, God, those are words that, in my experiential knowingness, go together. And when you come into the feet of the Christed energy genuinely, when you've had that experience, there is no denying it. That experience of field of energy is so powerful, so overwhelming, that you immediately go into this incredible humility. And that humility has you waiting on God, spirit, Christed energy, and all the words in between are not debatable. So the spiritual knowingness, in my opinion, is something that you cannot escape from because you were, you came in on that thread. So without that, who are you? What would you be? It doesn't make sense. It's like, it is what is. So you cannot step outside of that. Um, you are very true. We had a, on Sunday morning, on Sunday sermon, we had, our, uh, our guest was Thomas Aquinas. And we, we channeled him. And he, and part of his message was, I was, he was talking about Satanists. And he said, how can you be so stupid as to as to worship something that doesn't exist and pass up the opportunity of worshiping a god that everybody knows exists that's a good point yeah. really a profound point of absolute truth because you know we we people are so vested right now in podcasts and around the world into the dark side the deep state the da 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 When you keep putting your focus there, you keep getting that. When you take yourself out of that and put your focus toward that which is, the greater that which is, your your field of energy, your atomic field, your light body actually expands. And that's just a natural law of physics. You can't escape the light. You can try. You might even try for many lifetimes, but you won't. (laughs) (laughs) No, a lot of what we talk about is... uh is life plans, reincarnation. It's, it all ties together. And it's amazing how pe- many people don't even understand the concept of reincarnation. Uh, I mean, we, yeah. talk, we talk a lot about religions not wanting to have you know about reincarnation. Isn't that true? Yeah, because it's easy to control their their calendars that they changed on us and the life cycles that they changed on women and the things like that. It it just locks that that time and space or that dimensional frequency in place. And so you keep running through what they call the matrix and you keep going through that repeatedly. But the reincarnation portion of it is a real thing. And I remember when I learned about it, I remember where I was sitting, reading about that, learning about it for the first time. I'm like, whoa, this is this really speaks to me. This is correct. I know this is because it answered a lot of what I felt or was drawn to or why I was uh, pinged by different times and spaces. And if people really knew how serious that is, like you're given so many heartbeats in a lifetime in this vessel, so optimize them, use them so you don't have to come back and repeat something else. I think... You know, if you if you're not on the page of reincarnation at this point, you're like so late to the party. <laughs> it's going to be hard to catch up. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, give me a quick story how I found out about reincarnation and how I learned about my prior life. We had that antique gallery up in up near Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and I didn't know it, but I had fought. I I, I was a Confederate captain that fought at Gettysburg. And it was, that's why they put me where they did for this lifetime and where I was born and everything. 
uh, when I was a kid, all I ever wanted to do was go out to the battlefield. You know? I mean, <laughs> that makes I always, sense, I, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't know why. But anyway, one night I'm out, to, uh, that first book I wrote has a lot of photography from the battlefield, a lot of ghost photography. Always had this spot where I'd have a lot of activity. But one night I'm out here by myself and I walk, I'm walking down this wooded path. And in my head, I hear this voice just as loud as can be. It says, don't, don't go. So I stopped, went back, walked about 20, 25 feet. And this big tree falls right on the path where I would have been. If, wow. I, if I had not listened to that message, I would have been under that damn tree at night by myself. And it would not have had a good ending. So we yeah. went back and we, and we, we were challenged. So I asked my guide. I said, was this a guardian angel that, that helped me out there? And the, the guide comes back and it says, no, it was the boys. I mean, what do you mean it was the boys? I have chills. <laughs> the guide comes back and says, it was the fellows that you fought with out there. And then they give me my name, regiment, and the whole thing. So I took a ghost. And that, I can, now I know what's going on a little bit. So I took a ghost box out turned the ghost box on and said, hi guys, do you, do you know who I am? Over the ghost box I hear, yes, sir, captain. And then goes, you better keep your head down. Those damn Yankees are still shooting at us. <laughs> 150 <laughs> years later, and they're still out there shooting at each other. Oh my gosh. But that's how I learned beyond a shadow of a doubt about the, the, the true fact of reincarnation. Well, that would definitely, uh, sober you up to that realization that this is real, that this is a, a a time space continuum. And I think that speaks to some of the other things that we've talked about along the way, Barry, oh, is yeah. that we're here to get it right. We're here to learn and and we just have so much of the distraction and what your other channeling was like about Satan and so on. But you don't have to fixate on it either. Because if we correct within, then we have this ability to also reflect that back out. And then we attract more light and more love, really. Yeah, really. Hey, so you've named your show Making Life Brighter. How'd you come up with that name? <laughs> you know, I spent about a year and a half, spent a year and a half um, contemplating what one thing could I do for the world? that would have a positive, proactive impact. And I spent a year and a half contemplating that. What's the one thing that I could do? And one day, finally, it came to me, making life brighter, not better, because we're not making it better, we're making it brighter. And making life brighter has so many different connotations and meanings. And don't you know that after I came up with that, a year or two later, I ended up um, interviewing a fellow who's become a great friend of mine, and he is like the rock god of Asia, and his name is Sewong Kim, or Kim Sewong is how they actually reverse it there. Do you know what his name means? No. Making life brighter in Korean. Oh, and when we sat down <laughs> and started to talk, we started to laugh because it was just, that's the beauty and the synchronicity and the silliness that you have to see this lifetime with. Look at that, right? I mean, what's the chance of that? And it was just really, truly a heartfelt uplift to share and talk. And that's really what that, that is about, bringing forward different topics and people that are making people's lives brighter. Well. Do you think there's anything, any such thing as a happy atheist? <laughs> <laughs> Are you joking? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I know they think they're happy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think they're happy until they hit the other side and then they go, oh, whoa. Okay. Maybe I, maybe I missed some of the narrative this round because if you're, if you're looking to really kind of complete this cycle and segue out of this matrix, you would be optimizing whatever you could so that you don't repeat karmas and, and have things. It's a lot of energy to be an atheist, in my opinion. It's just a lot of energy. Uh, I, I don't see how they uh, 
come up with their conclusions. We get an awful lot of messages about miracles. I mean, the fact that we're going to channel an archangel in the next segment, that's a miracle. I mean, you got a, a, an atheist isn't going to accept that, but they're probably clicking the show off right now as we speak. But well, I'll tell you something, Barry. I have to say, ever since a little kid, I'm very happy to be a Sagittarian in this lifetime because I seek the truth, and that's just been an automatic, you know, program inside of me, and I'm really glad for that because I wouldn't want to spend my whole life mentally questioning things when I could be in my heart space. I just I'm really so like easy. being in my heart. <laughs> no, I mean, I... I'd look at the belief in God as the fact as the only way you're going to find true happiness. I believe that too. It's I, I that that's the basic key to it for us, for Connie and myself. I mean, we spend a lot of time trying to convince people and a lot of people turn our shows off. Uh, I mean, there, there are a lot of shows. If you mention the word God, you're not going to get on their show. I, mean, I know. Well, some of that is because now people that are supposedly um, Christian say you can't use the word God. And that's the kind of mental mind bend that's going on. It's just so ridiculous. And you've got the people purporting that someone that believes in God is now spell casting. It's like, oh, come on. You know what? Grow up. When you get into the space of what we deal with, and at least what I deal with, and people are living and dying, you just you really get into that subtle energy field where you, nothing can shake your belief in what is there in that sweet loving presence of spirit and that Christed light that comes in it is so beautiful and i stand by it wholeheartedly oh yeah i i look at it as that is the way to true happiness yeah it, what else is there i mean at the end no, of the day nothing. you break it down what else is there Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, I mean, we spend a lot of time doing channelings and bringing messages to people. And it's, we do, we had our message on Wednesday uh, from, from Jesus. And he gave us a prayer for people to use to pray to him. I went back and looked, and when I sit down to channel, I have no idea what's coming out of my mouth. And when I went back and looked at that prayer, I said, did that really come out of my mouth? It was perfect. I mean, if I had sat down, it would take me weeks to write this thing. And I sat <laughs> during this channeling and, and just simply spoke it. No. It came from God. What else would you expect? <laughs> yeah, really. That's so beautiful. I mean, you really have a gift and you discovered this. What I love about your story is that here you are, this hardcore engineer, and you turn into a total spiritist of sorts. And it's like you are commissioned back to do the work of God here and you're bringing that forward. I think it's, it's a brilliant, brilliant synergistic gift you've been given. It is amazing. All right, let's take a short break. I want to thank you for tuning into our show. We'll be back in two minutes. We'll have further conversation with Winifred and then we're going to channel with an archangel. Connie and Barry will be back after a few words from our sponsors. Become our friend on Facebook. Post your thoughts about our shows and network on our timeline. Visit Facebook.com forward slash Voice America. Is death the end of the journey of the soul or a time of new beginnings? Is there proof of an afterlife? What would historic figures say if they lived today? Psychic and channeler Barry Strom uses his gift of spirit communication to answer these questions and explore all aspects of the hereafter. Have all the information necessary not to fear life's final journey. Tune in to Spirit Speak, exploring the afterlife with Connie and Barry Strom. Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Variety Channel. Voice America programs are now available on your favorite connected device, including Amazon, Alexa, and Google Home. Through streams with Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, and iHeartRadio, listening to your favorite show is as easy as saying the show name followed by the word podcast. Hey, Alexa, play Finding Your Frequency podcast. If that doesn't work, try adding on TuneIn or on iHeartRadio or on Apple Podcasts. 
psychic and author Barry Strom has now published nine books dealing with supernatural subject from ghosts to aliens. His most recent books, Messages of God and Messages of the Prophet Muhammad for a Modern World, bring you the channeled messages of the founders of Christianity and Islam. Their words are intended to guide their followers through these modern times. These books are available in softcover and ebook on Amazon.com. Signed copies of all of Strom's books are available on his website, www.barrystrom.com. The Internet's number one talk station. Number one talk station. VoiceAmerica.com. Welcome back to Spirit Speak, exploring the afterlife. Here are your hosts, Connie and Barry Strom. Hey everyone, welcome back. Our guest today is Winifred Adams, and we've been discussing finding true happiness and a bunch of other things. So, Connie, do you have a question for Winifred? Of course I do. Winifred, you are what's called an intuitive healer. Will you explain to our listeners how that works? Sure. Well, just to clarify, uh, people know me as a medical intuitive and a quantum healer. And I use my gift of intuition to sort out in the body and the bio field where the energetic backups are or the anomalies and the degree to that backup. So once I can figure out where it is, then I can look at how intense it is or how much it will take to overcome and using intuition to guide the situation along with the hand of God and along with the um, spirit doctors, the masters, all of this, the spirit realm to come in and actually guide us to unlocking what people need in order to heal, getting their energy set straight so they can heal. Okay. What advice do you give to individuals that you find is gives them the most success? <laughs> Be disciplined. That's what I say. <laughs> oh Be disciplined. And they don't like that. Especially today, because everyone's addicted to going out and finding the next word and the most fascinating word and blah, blah. What if you were just given the word? Or what if you could hear the music of the spheres or the actual word of God? What if you could hear that? Would you need anything else? That's kind of what it comes down to. If you're disciplining toward your spirit, that's the best use of your time in this lifetime. Well, I've got to get a little plug in here. If you really want to hear the words of God, we do a Wednesday morning podcast. It's called A Weekly Message from Jesus. And my last book is called Messages of God for a Modern World, where we took 60 of his messages, put it into book form, and made a daily devotional out of it. So, love it, love it, love we your speak work. With him quite a bit, actually. But a lot of people speak with him in prayer, but very few can really hear his words come back. So, we've got all these podcasts up on uh, our YouTube channel where we actually speak with God, and you can hear his words. So, all right, let's. Uh, we have uh, Archangel. Hamiel. Now, I know many of you aren't familiar with her, but she is is the god of happiness and joy, very close to God, and we're going to do a live channeling with her right now, and then we're she's going to give us a message, and then we're going to have a few questions for her. So, Archangel Hamiel, do you have a message for us? Yes, I am so pleased that you would allow me to come through and speak today. As you said, not many people are aware of my presence, but there are many archangels of which people do not know. The ancients only became aware of a few of us, Gabriel, Michael. There are several that are mentioned in the Gospels, but there are many. God has many messengers, and yes, God is the key. God is where it all starts. God is where it all started. 
God is where everything in the future will start as well. Without God, you will find you have no chance of happiness. You may think you do. You may chase wealth. You may chase power. You may chase all the trappings that you think will bring you, that will bring you happiness. You may not believe in God. You may think life ends upon death. How can you be happy thinking that? There is no way you can be happy thinking that the grave is the end. True happiness comes when you understand that your soul will enter heaven and have everlasting life. That is true happiness. Without that understanding, there will be something missing from your life, and it will be what humans refer to as happiness. So thank you. I thank you for allowing me to to come through today. I hope that you will have questions for me because that is what God has asked me to do, is he asked me to come forward and answer questions. So I am here. And we're so happy that about that. Uh, would you explain your role in heaven? I try to guide people on the path to God. By guiding people to God, I try to guide them to happiness. I try to allow them to, to know the true understanding. Many ignore me. Many choose to follow a path of evil instead of following the path of light. I can advise, but I cannot force. The greatest God, gift that God gave to man was his free will. We can guide we can help. But if an individual ignores God and does not ask for our help, then we leave them to their own decision-making without guidance. Quite often that takes them to a place they don't want to go. But I do what I can. I allow her, I allow people to make their own decisions. But if is oriented towards God, then they will make the right ones, hopefully. Yeah. Winifred, you have a question for her? Well, this is a real gift and an honor. Thank you for for speaking with us, and especially through Barry. He's a bright, beautiful soul. And I guess my concern right now in the work that I do, what I'm seeing is such a deep divide among the young souls that need to figure it out here. People that call themselves aware and awake but are really equally dark and they're spreading fear. How do you see that changing so that they can lose that fear and come into a place of communion with spirit? It all starts with the young, as you know, and as you have just said. We try to advise the young, but there are so many distractions. Social media, for one, has led many of the young away from learning of the true existence of God. You're seeing a time where it is very difficult to get along. Many fathers abandon their children, leaving the wives to have multiple jobs that results in them not being able to be with their child and to give them guidance. It is a time where governments have got to realize their responsibilities. You're seeing a time where people are taking God out of government, out of schools, out of institutions of higher learning. 
the people have got to understand that they need to put God back into these institutions. There was a time not too long ago that people could pray in schools. Today, evil has affected many of these institutions and prayer is no longer accepted. Many of your news channels refuse to accept the concepts of God. People have got to react to the negativity that is around them. Simply learn God's simple messages and live by them. How hard is it for a parent to tell a child not to do anything to anyone else that they do not want to have done to them? Yeah, but people don't do that, do they? Sadly, they do not. Sadly, people would rather pursue wealth, steal, do drugs, ruin the life of others. That, sadly, is the result of the free will God's given them. What must take place is a true understanding of what happens to their soul upon passing. A soul that follows evil goes to lower realms of heaven. Souls that live good lives go to upper realms. The upper realms are so much better. Now, do not think there is, there is a burning hell, because there is not. There is a lower level of nothingness where truly evil people are sent. But it is a matter of preference. Do you want to be with your deceased family members in heaven? Or do you want to be in a level where you cannot be with them? So it really comes down to a common sense. You follow a simple command, and you live a good life in heaven. A human life is so short. It is not a blink of the eye. You've lived many lives. You've just spoke of reincarnation, which is a true fact. You've had lives before Earth existed. It is a concept that you will not truly understand until you return. But you can simply understand the simple commands of leading the young on the path of light. Do you think that evil is growing? Evil has been around since the inception of humans. Throughout ancient history, there has been huge amounts of evil. There have been violent wars where hundreds of thousands of people have lost their lives. Today, evil is taking a different form. Massive amounts of wealth are being accumulated by relatively few people. This accumulation of wealth takes money away from being able to do good for others. Evil is very concentrated now. The people that have great amounts of evil have the ability to do great harm. They can use social media networks. There are many ways that they can expand the harm that they do. How is it possible to find true happiness in this world? As you have been speaking, find God. Follow the light instead of the darkness. Helping others. True happiness is when someone comes to you and say, I want to thank you for helping me. You've changed my life. I now understand what my path is. If you've never had anybody do that, 
you've never understood true ha- true happiness. You do not have to be rich to be happy. Helping others is the key. Following the simple commandments of God. That is the key. Winifred, you got another question for him? There is such a divide and a, a narrative today about this deep state. And and I know that, you know, part of the corruption on earth is the trafficking of children, the trafficking of people, human beings, and doing the most heinous things. But is there, in pornography, coming in to really corrupt people's minds and souls and hearts, is there an end point to that? That is an excellent question. Free will is something that God has given everyone. Free will is something that individuals all have possession of. How individuals use those free wills will determine how they are judged when they return. Individuals are also given free will into how they treat their peacemakers, how they treat their justice systems, how they pick their judges, how they make their laws. If individuals would require strict adherence to laws and the principles of God, then those people that follow such lives would be prosecuted, would be shunned. If people did not support drug use, abduction of children, many of the things that take place today, then it would cease. It takes two people. If an individual wants to sell drugs, someone has to buy them. If somebody wants to support a sex tra- a sex trafficker, there are other sides to the story as well. So the people have to determine whether they want to follow good or whether they want to follow bad. All right. Time to take another short break. When we come back, the phone lines are going to be open. The number is 866-473-5788. You can call in and speak to an archangel. Thank you. Connie and Barry will be back after a few words from our sponsors. Follow us on Twitter at VoiceAmericaTRN. Get the lowdown on guests, new shows, and your favorites. That's VoiceAmericaTRN. Psychic and author Barry Strom has now published nine books dealing with supernatural subject from ghosts to aliens. His most recent books, Messages of God and Messages of the Prophet Muhammad for a Modern World, bring you the channeled messages of the founders of Christianity and Islam. Their words are intended to guide their followers through these modern times. These books are available in softcover and ebook on Amazon.com. Signed copies of all of Strom's books are available on his website, www.barrystrom.com. Connect with us, and we'll connect with you. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is on LinkedIn. Get the first word about happenings with the network, where our next live event will be, and what's up with our hosts. Look up Voice America on LinkedIn. Is death the end of the journey of the soul, or a time of new beginnings? Is there proof of an afterlife? What would historic figures say if they lived today? Psychic and channeler Barry Strom uses his gift of spirit communication to answer these questions and explore all aspects of the hereafter. Have all the information necessary not to fear life's final journey. Tune in to Spirit Speak, exploring the afterlife with Connie and Barry Strom. 
Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Variety Channel. Streaming live, the leader in Internet talk radio, voiceamerica.com. Welcome back to Spirit Speak, exploring the afterlife. Have a question for Barry or their guests? Join us on the show at 866-472-5788. That's 866-472-5788. Now, back to the show. Okay, welcome back, everybody, and thank you for tuning in. The phone lines are now open if you have a question for any of us, including the Archangel Hamiel. Number is 866-473-5788. Okay, Winifred, you have any more questions for the Archangel? I do, actually. What is it like to be at the feet and be a servant of God direct? It is the most amazing thing that you can ever imagine. God is all-knowing. When you are in the presence of that great energy, it is, it is beyond any human comprehension. We have no idea, or humans have no idea, of just how far-reaching his abilities and energies are. Keep in mind, he is, he is not only God of this planet, but he is on other planets as well. There are other life forms. There are cultures on other planets that have lived for millions and millions of years and have learned to follow his words. He knows, he knows all. How he can be in billions of different places and different humans. The first thing that souls generally feel when they return over here is an absolute amazement at what they see. It's an absolute amazement at what goes on of the different dimensions that surround human beings. The energy of God is incomprehensible. It is possible to feel the energies of God when you pray to him, when you open your heart to him. Many never feel that energy because they're incapable of truly believing. They're incapable of truly understanding the simplicity of his message. But when you accept the light, when you accept the path, then you will feel a small portion of that energy. When you are over here and you are near him, you will feel all of the energy. It's actually, I can give people a heads up on how you feel it here. You feel the chills and you have tears coming out of your eyes. And you know that's God with these arms around you. Hamiel, okay. uh, are there any other archangels that we can pray to in order to find happiness? Basically, all of the archangels can help you find happiness. Sometimes you are suffering from an illness, Raphael. You can pray to him for to help you. You can pray to Michael for protecting you. When you are protected, you, are, you will find happiness. My primary role is attempting to lead you to God. That is the ultimate happiness. Keep in mind that there are many things in life plans, and all humans return with life plans, that prayer cannot affect. You come into life with lessons you must learn, and sometimes it's grief, it's suffering. It's things that you must learn on your own and, and handle. But there is help. There are people like Winifred that can guide you, that can give you information. 
But the ultimate decision is will be yours. If you make the decision to follow the advice that, that you're given by individuals that know God, then your chance at happiness will be much better. How is it possible for people with serious illnesses to find true happiness? That is very difficult. As I said, sometimes individuals are sent back with serious illnesses. I will give you an example. Barry channeled Lou Gehrig, the famous baseball player. He was sent back with incredible abilities to play a sport. He lived a good life. He was a good example for others. He tried to help others. He was given in his life plan a very serious illness that took his life. It took his abilities to even move. But his mind stayed perfect. He knew what was going on around him so he could make his own decisions. Throughout that illness, he felt blessed by God for all that he had lived in his life. He remained a true example. Even though he knew he was dying, even though this great athlete could no longer move his hands, he still remained a good example for, in, for others. He was happy for the blessings that he was given, and he knew that he had suffering. He did not want to ruin the life that he had lived because things to him had taken a serious change. Yes, he's an amazing soul. Hamio, if you had just one piece of advice for an individual in serious depression, what would that be? I would advise him first to seek advice. Seek advice on how they can cha make changes in their lives. Depression can also be a, a problem that is, was associated with a life plan. Depression can be an incredibly difficult illness to overcome. Depression often leads to suicide. A human soul should never, ever consider suicide because it is ending their life plan short. It is ending lessons that need to still be learned. Individuals that commit suicide must watch the grief that they cause with the, from those that they are left behind. Depression and suicide are very, very difficult. If you have depression, try to come closer to God. Pray to the angels. Pray to God. Pray for guidance that will lead you away from your illness. Try to look at the positive things that are happening in the world. Now, I know that's very difficult, but there are always positive things. Try to live a life of helping others. Do busy. Do busy things. Volunteer. Help others. The more that you help others, the more that you will have the opportunity to draw away from your illness. Winifred, have a question? Uh, what, Hemiel, what would the uh, proper path be for someone that has stepped away from God, how do they come back to God with that happiness? 
you have to understand that each day is a new beginning. Do not look back at what you've done in the past of your life. Focus clearly on what you need to do in the future. Each day is a new beginning. You do not know how many days you have in your life, in your incarnate life. There will be a time that it ends. Forgiveness is an interesting concept. God is very forgiving. If you turn to him, if you try to follow his words, if you try to follow his advice, then things will improve in your life. But you have to focus and you have to be determined. If you say you're going to follow him and then go out and do as you did in the past, then it will not help you to become closer to him. Do you find members of any particular religion happier than another religion? There are members of certain religions that are taught to fear God. If you fear God, then you will not be truly happy. God wants you to love him. God does not want you to fear him. He wants you to understand his teachings and to follow them. That is the way of things that will lead you to great happiness. Okay, uh, we're starting to run down here. Uh, Winifred, you got two minutes. Tell us about all the things that you do. Uh, <laughs> really? Oh, my. I don't know if I can do it in two minutes. I'll speak in triple time. Uh, well, Basically, my my gift is medical intuition and quantum healing, and I've used that literally my entire life since I was a kid and didn't even know those terms and didn't understand what was happening through my hands when I'd put them on people or affect people's field of energy or their biofield. Um, I don't. I can do it remotely now, so I don't have to put my hands on anybody necessarily, but. The receptivity of somebody is the key to making that really work well and the surrender. And I wanted to bring that into this because it came to me when um, Archangel Hamiel was speaking. Surrender is the key. And if we can surrender to uh, our heart, our open heart, our spirit, and let that communion come through, now we're in the flow and so I help people stay or reach or reach out to and capture their flow again. And some people would say it's realigning them to their timeline, but it's really coming into the communion with your own spirit enough that you find balance and harmony, and that balance and harmony then translates through your human body. And so, you know, I do a lot of things. I have a radio show, Making Life Brighter. I'm on YouTube, Making Life Brighter. I have Making Life Brighter, the website, and that'll tell you a little bit more about the things that we're doing and featuring. I'll have courses upcoming this year. I'm looking to do some um, deep dive, quiet retreats as I go forward. And these courses will be helpful with people to not only learn medical intuition, but to tap into their ability and knowledge to help others so it's good for healers and for nurses and people like that okay um, uh, sorry <laughs> we've got a minute to go, go. <laughs> oh, yeah. thank you Dorian, for let me finish up here all right next week our Todd Roar show is going to be titled the wonderful world of witches our special guest will be marla brooks a witch and a host of the show stirring the cauldron on the parax radio network I currently have got about nine books out there. They're all on Amazon. Signed copies are available on my website, barrystrom.com. And I would like to thank all of you for joining us on the Voice America Variety Network. If you'd like to see more of our channelings, we have almost 400 videos on our YouTube channel. It's in the name of Barry Strom. I think you heard that once before today. Okay. I hope all of you enjoyed our conversation with Winifred and our channeling with the Archangel. Our hope is that they've managed to make your day, as Winifred would say, a little bit brighter. 
I'd like to thank all of you for listening. Please tell your friends and join us each Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. on the Voice America Variety Radio Network. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Spirit Speak, exploring the afterlife with Connie and Barry Strom. Tune in next week for another informative and inspiring episode on the Voice America Variety Channel at 9 a.m. Pacific Time.